All right, we're here at Winter Meetings with Marley Rivera, ESPN.com. Kind enough to sit down and talk with us. Buttered you up because I have so many compliments and questions. But first time meeting, we met a couple days ago, so very kind nice. of you to come sit with us. Oh, I'm, so I'm going to butter you down. Be yeah, uh, he'll, be the, he'll be the bad he's, cop. He's been oddly excited to interview. Like, I'm excited. Like, this is nice. Thanks for coming, Marley. But he... <laughs> thanks. I really appreciated the eye roll no that problem. went along with that. Like that? <laughs> I, I do act. Um, but no, Theater. John Boy has been, like, freaking out. Well, so. I think that, and I'll just start it. This is so kind. Just, oh, thank let's you. go. I'll just say and it right away. I'm so glad that you guys have this on video because of the fact that no one sees me slipping you the 20. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. Oh, like, uh, okay. seriously. No, so oh. here's, here's the uh, compliment <laughs> that you're going to say is uh, too over the top. I think you were the most impressive thing about the All-Star game this season. And I think I tweeted it out at the time. And I think that you should start a school or something for (laughs) reporting and translating and the mixture. I don't cry. So if you don't know who Marley is... She's on field reporter. Like that was what, that was my first really experience was the on field reporting. I'm a writer. Writer. They put on TV every once in a while. Espen. Well, yes. Espen. Espen. <laughs> out of out of Connecticut. Put okay. Espen out of. Well, I don't work out of Connecticut. I never go. You're lucky. I grew up there. <laughs> now look. Yeah, we were here at last winter meetings. You were up front. And you were asking all the questions, and I remember when you asked I the was. question, Boone smiled, and I was like, Oh, I see. Well, he used to work with me. I know. Right. I know. <laughs> But I love seeing the uh, when we were in the scrum, which, A, we didn't go to any of the scrums this year because they're so boring. So hats off to you for going to those and participating. But when we when I was always like, who asked the questions here? Because you know all the beat writers' names. Yes. You're like, who's the vocal one? Who doesn't ask any questions? I'm always interested. Who asked first and stuff like that? That's actually interesting. And so you'll know. And obviously, I'm telling you, just the three of you. Yes, no one. Close And yours. the rest Nobody of you. <laughs> is that sometimes... We are encouraged uh, to ask questions. Yeah. Certain certain uh, number of us gotcha. may, may or may not be encouraged uh, by uh, by public uh, relations professionals. To, uh, I wouldn't ask, ask any. Questions. I would never ask questions. Like even if I was allowed there, I would be just too shy. Like, oh my god, I'm no, gonna, I, I'm gonna I, blow I this. I really appreciate the compliment. Of course, the greatest thing about the All Star Game was Vlad Guerrero Jr. But um, no, <laughs> like no, the, no, 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 his no. That was my during vote. The, yeah. During the home run derby. Sorry again. It's okay. I'll but. take that. <laughs> but so, no, I voted for him too. One of the worst part about being a baseball fan for me is that I don't know Spanish. I really wish I knew Spanish because all the players are there and with the loudest personalities, and I want to hear what they're saying. And yeah. and the and the translation in the post game interviews, it's like this isn't real. But what you were able to do mm. was ask the question in Spanish. They respond in Spanish, and then you tell us right away in English. And yes. you ask in English. Well, you ask in English because they understand English. And that was for so many people like, how did they understand this? Because they're not dumb, guys. They're, they no. live here. They t- communicate. They're just, you know, not as confident to speak it. So you ask them in English. They return and Vlad returns in Spanish. Yeah. And then you give it to the audience in English. And I'm like, my mind was blown. I was like, this <laughs> is you. so much better mm. than what it usually is. I all, well, yeah, so that is, how did that start? Like, how on air did someone come to you? Well, I've, I've done, um, so I've worked at ESPN, this is my ninth year. Mm-hmm. So what I, I covered the Yankees for a long time, then I became a national writer, and then what I started doing in the last maybe six or seven years, and I apologize, I, don't, I have a terrible cold, so I will disinfect this microphone Good, right no. after. <laughs> but um, when I started at ESPN, I started writing. Then they asked me to contribute for Sports Center, and I started doing like kind of spots for Sports Center in the last five or six years. And I started doing some features. I, the one we did, one of our pop, more popular features among your crowd, like the cool people. Right. You know, the uh-huh. old people have read, I've seen them all, but for the cool people, I did a really big one where I rode with Cespedes all his cars. So like that oh. kind of stuff, I started doing that for Sports Center. And they really, because I've been in this game for a really long time, um, they appreciated the relationships. So when you have built some relationships, and like you said, obviously I am Puerto Rican and I speak uh, fluently both English and Spanish. Eh, English, <laughs> but Spanish is all right. <laughs> and um, so I, I've been able to develop these bonds with these guys that I've known for a very, very long time. Like we were just talking about Vlad Guerrero Jr., who I've known since he was eight years old. Yeah. So there's yeah. also these bonds that develop. And Does you were call saying, you Marley? You prefer, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> the, like that's actually uh, Xander Bogarts, who's also known me, um, you know, most of his, uh, I don't know, whatever 
he's 20, what is he standing now? 24, 25? It's crazy how long, Whatever, who how knows, long he's right? been doing it. Like but um, yeah, so I, I've known him since he was like 17 or 18. So yeah. it's, it's like these kids who really see me as this sort of person who they can communicate with and they've developed a bond, right? So yeah. it isn't that I can't report on any other players, but this sector of players in particular that I speak their language, they feel very comfortable with me. So I think yeah. that the reason why it worked during the Home Run Derby and the All-Star Game was because of the relationship that I had forged with both Ronald Acuna Jr. and Vlad Guerrero Jr. Yeah. Now, why don't other, I guess because they're not asking the questions because you're a reporter <laughs> and a translator. Yes. It needs to be more like a, you need to open up a school or something or it just <laughs> needs to be called because like, I've never seen it before. Um, when mm. did you say, how, how about I do it this way? No, well... Obviously, everything is very scripted, right? especially yeah. in like a, a thing of this scale. And and so you guys know, especially Vladi, Vladi will listen to questions in English and also um, and answer them in Spanish. And so does Ronald, but some of them don't. But one of the things that we tend to do in this case, it didn't apply, would be to explain to the player ahead in Spanish of what I'm going to ask. Okay. So they actually will know exactly what I'm going to ask. Oh, anyway. that's good. So they'll get the gist of it. So I did that. But Vladi and Ronald both are very good at understanding you in mm -hmm. English, so I didn't have to do that with them. So that is one little trick. And also, when I was trying, when I was younger than you guys, so I was really, really super young, um, one of the things that I supported myself with when I was going to college was being uh, an interpreter or okay. a translator. Yeah. So I actually developed that quality of being able to listen to someone at the same time. It's almost like a third voice. It really is like a bipolar, tripolar <laughs> situation. I was going to ask that. You get, as I'm talking to you guys, you get a third voice right here that is speaking to you. That it's That's kind of awesome. here saying, this is what you have to say. This is what you have to say. And not only that, on real, and as you guys know, on live television, our exchanges may be two minutes. Yeah. My description of what Vladi is going to tell me, I have, I have 30 seconds to yeah. say it. So yeah. it's also a condensation, right? Like a summary of what he said. So I really kind of prepared myself for that moment for a really long time. And a very nice gentleman named Norby Williamson, who is the VP of Sports Center Production at ESPN, um, had recognized my talent throughout the years on Sports Center and reached out to me, knowing that I had um, both um, relations with Black Guerrero Jr. and Ronald, who were both going to be in the home run. Yeah. Program. So yeah. he goes, you know what? She's the person who's going to do this, and we're not going to use the translator. Yeah. And of course, I was blown away. I didn't expect it. This is, you know, this is prime time, literally. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was impressed, and now I'm more impressed. Now <laughs> that. I thank you. Something, uh, one of the few things he gets riled up about he gets riled up are about, you gonna right? do the contentious thing oh, I like this. reporters maybe I, okay what I'm is it what do i get riled up well about? i was gonna say like the, the gary sanchez example let's get angry yeah. let's get is, angry. is that it, so, he, he gets so passionate about this that he feels like what? reporters will be tougher on latin players because the translator is a buffer so like someone will say hmm. something borderline mean to Gary Sanchez, I'll I'll let you go. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. And uh, all the beat reporters are nice to me. So, and I don't know whose voices are saying things. I think that reporters use the translator as like a, a buffer to to be ask harsher questions in a tone. Like I think uh, you know, one time with Gary, like the question was like, "Did you try?" And I was like, "You wouldn't have asked that if you were speaking the same language, right?" To his right, face. you wouldn't ask CC. Hmm. You would. You would have. You would have. You would have. You would have buffed. The, uh, you know. I've never, and, and, and I'm not saying that it isn't true. I've just never, I want to digest it. I want to yeah. think about it. I, I want to feel like, oh, I actually want to see this now. That's now why that I, you've presented this to me, I actually want to see it in action and see if it's true. I haven't uh, thought that ever. Yeah. So I, I but, uh, but that I doesn't am, mean that it's not true. I am so very I protective of Gary Sanchez, though. Well, so maybe I've, it's just that's the mother. another one that I have out. known since he was 17. Yeah. He's like my child. But yeah, don't tell him that. Okay, well, just tell him to come on the show. You'll come on and you translate with us. Okay? Do you have a, do Gary you, speaks pretty good English. Do you he have just, a good, you know how it is. Do you have a He's good Gary shy. story? Because that would, that would make his world. I'm trying to think. Um, we were in, I'll give you just because we were just talking about the home run derby. So Gary is sitting next to, we, you saw like all the former players get to sit on the, the former players, all the current <laughs> players, are, all the all-stars are sitting on the, on the ground yeah. and they're cheering their teammates and our oldest Chapman and Gary were sitting to my right when I was sitting down and he was there with his daughter and Gary has a, a little daughter who's about, I don't know, I think she's about five years old now. I could be off on, yeah. on the age and um, she had just fallen and uh, broken her fruit two front teeth. Uh -huh. So <laughs> Gary Literally. kept going and Gary kept going like, Marley, what do you think? Am I going to get? And I was like, they're going to grow, Gary. Like, just for like. <laughs> so he was very concerned about his daughter's two front teeth. So he's a very caring dad. So that's yes. it. That's, that was like the first one that I thought Did of. Did you play him the song, Gary's All I Want Gary. for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth? 
You say, listen, this is a common they thing. They didn't grow <laughs> up with this. It's going to be I very know. confusing yeah. in Dominican culture. You know, us Puerto Ricans and Dominicans were very serious about our Christmas. I can't believe it. Okay, okay. <laughs> What's something that you think from the Dominican culture that's mm. not part of like everyday fanhood or baseball games that it happens over there? And I know there's just like more vibrancy, but like, is there anything specific? You're like, hey, I wish we did this or, or the mm, American Not crowd. that I wish we did this, actually, because <laughs> I was going to go. One of the things that happens, it happens in Puerto Rico. It happens a lot in the in the Dominican Republic. And my experience mostly being Puerto Rican and being in Puerto Rico, but obviously haven't gone to winter ball in the Dominican many times and to Venezuela too, is that the fans are very vocal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I wearing and, the perfect hat and for they this? They can hear it might be. Did Look you know at that? that. You have La your Vida, La, flag. La Vida gave it to me. <laughs> Look at that. So um they're um they're very vocal and they really tell you what you think in um in words that shall not be repeated. So they're worse than Yankee <laughs> fans. Oh, it's not even it's the way that Yankee fans are towards opponents. Yeah. That's the way they are towards, like, their, their own. Team. Yeah. Their the own Yankee guys. fans have a little bit, too. Okay. It's it? really tough. It's really, there's a lot of, but I love the passion. And one thing that we should do. Okay. I have everything. We have a lot of dancing. Yeah. Oh, we have a C, lot C, of dancing. C. And then we That's like that. Role, yeah. There's always, you guys should see that. There's always uh, some congas. So there's going to be, like, just, there's always music. Uh-huh. And there's the excitement. And because we don't have... In a lot of our, you know, or the Latin American countries, we don't have the same, you know, level of facilities that we do of a, a beautiful, you know, $1.8 billion structure that is, you know, the, the white elephant Yankee Stadium. Yeah. And you need to fill it in, you know, some, somehow so the entertainment isn't, right? Like right. you don't have uh, anyone dictating through music how you should feel in that's, between that's innings. That's my goal. <laughs> in how, between innings, know how, right? know how McConaughey at, is at University of Texas and he's the minister of culture or whatever? Yes. That's what I want to be for the Yankees one day down Look at this. Road. I like this. Yeah. The minister of culture for the New York Yankees. Yeah. You have to define this role, though. So. Now I know why he wanted you on. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Blushing over here. Is it true that DJ LeMay is the best dancer in the clubhouse? <laughs> I haven't seen DJ dancing. But That's because he has. I was going to say. Yet to dance. And I was going to say. And I know <laughs> I missed that joke. Like, yeah. really, like it went right over my head as, it, as, you, as things usually do. But um, DJ, I don't know that DJ. <laughs> he's such a lovely gentleman. DJ is not very agile, except just on a baseball field. Like, in general, he looks a little... Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. And he's, he's just unbelievable. Like, when I started watching DJ play first base, I was like, where this old oh is this what he came, freaking yeah. came from? I, I, think, uh, yeah. I think David Cohn said it on a broadcast, but DJ LeMay, he went Little League mode, that he could play <laughs> anywhere, and he was the best player on the field for, he decided like, it. four months this, this season. Is it. He said, this is it, this is who I am. And I remember going up to him at the end of the season. We were at the Rangers. Uh, I picked up the Yankees beat. My colleague, uh, Coley Harvey, went over to Fox. Oh, I hate that. Hollywood so I needed Harvey. to take. Hollywood um, Harvey. Oh. <laughs> so Hollywood Harvey, I hope you're listening, Coley. Yeah. Um, Hollywood <laughs> Harvey goes to Fox and goes to do all his Football. fancy TV oh, stuff on God. Fox. You know? <laughs> So he's representing over there. So I had to pick up. Um, they asked me to please pick up the Yankees just because I had done, done the job before. And um, yeah, so towards the end of the season, I go to uh, to DJ and I go, hey, you were just like whatever, one point away, two points away from the. And he's like, eh, yeah, like that's just DJ. Yeah. He just shows up. He decides that he's just going to work and he couldn't care less about accolades. And you always hear that there's players like that. This is the first one in 18 years of Korean baseball that I have ever seen that actually lives that. Yeah. That's crazy. This man has no idea. <laughs> no. That's like nice. how ridiculously great he is. <laughs> yeah. Like the like what he accomplished from yeah. the top of the order. That's fantastic. <laughs> what about um is Glaber impress you as much as he impresses oh, everyone he's else? It's yeah. just uh, yeah. what that's what's impressive. But even when we're talking about with the translation there was one time yeah. last year we're Talk about someone who taught himself to do really well speaking really English. well and the confidence in it and they tell the story that when he, you know, first got announced and he was tr- 20 years old and he spoke at a conference in front of fans on stage yeah i speak perfect english and i wouldn't be able to do that because i have stage fright you know that's why i hide behind a microphone and the camera <laughs> but the most impressive thing was in his rookie year and glaber does speaks english but he has marlon by his side yeah and they're asking him about the handshake uh like they were like, what's the dance with Didi? they asked him in english yes and he turned to marlon and said uh como se dice whatever handshake is in spanish yeah and then marlon said handshake and then Glaber looked back at the reporter and said, it's a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is, he's learning you know what's on the funny? fly. It's like what yeah. you did, as what I'm, you did. I'm talking to you guys like right now. I was thinking, I was like, oh shoot, they're going to ask me, how do I say handshake in Spanish? I actually don't know. 
So oh, that's good probably, job, Marlon. Because we I, I don't, don't really know. have like we have like a very fancy expression, which is like estrechar la mano or tocar la mano, but yeah. it isn't like one word that is snappy. Right. Yeah. So I feel like the guys were actually will say like fist bump or handshake because yeah. we don't really have a. Yeah, but I was like, like that's proper, crazy. Like he could have just had Marlon translate it for him, but he uh, wanted to learn on the fly and give it to him. I was like, that's so yeah. impressive for how and, young he and is. And he is just, and that's exactly when you're talking about Glaver. Obviously, he still has a lot of growth to do. Right, we saw it in the playoffs. There was a lot of degree of, of frustration if you're not yeah. having the greatest day. We like to call him Puppy Dog Glaber. He's <laughs> either he's either the happiest, waggiest tail, or he is. And that it, that for is the gonna, cam for the podcast. Can you listeners? believe that he is 23? No. So this is the same thing that we've seen, right? And and we've seen it with all these young infielders that have come to stellar. Right, like we've never seen a crop of stellar infielders the way we have in the last couple of years. Talking about the Lindors and the Baez yeah. and the right and the Correas yeah. and the Bregmans of the world, right? Like this, like Nolan Arenado and Chris Bryant, this incredible talent that we have, and all of them know how to handle themselves so freaking well. Mm -hmm. That's and what I, I look at them and I go, "You just said it when you were saying like I forget how long Xander Bogarts has been." Yeah, in baseball, and he's a freaking kid. He was on and like the 2013 at, Red Sox, yeah. right? And need I remind you that Vladdy is 21, uh, yeah. and the yeah. fact that I mean that dude ain't right. I mean <laughs> Ronald Acuna Jr. is yeah. you know he's a 21 year old. Him. Like this is just casually almost going 40 40. Like and uh, the infielders right. is a great point. The where we we battle on the internet regularly, and we've yeah. learned you know you you can't <laughs> like you can't live that lifestyle. But the one thing I have just gotten sucked into is the Jeter Hall of Fame stuff and oh. A, the unanimous stuff, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. But you were right. The infield talent now is so incredible that people forget, like... Be careful. Know. Big time Jack Curry is coming. A a oh. Swedish fish. Oh. I have a problem. Curry just Swedish fish If I start shit. eating these, like... It's over? Hell won't stop. Can I have one? And it's oh, cool. not in a cool way. Like, not like, well, if I have Swedish... Like, I'll be sick. Just one. I'll be <laughs> sick. Um, what I was saying... I can have one Thank you, stop. Jack. I'm impressed. Thanks, um, Jackie. But uh, people overlook because, uh, like, re I remember how big Jeter, Nomar, and A Rod was, oh. and and you know, A Rod slid over to third, and obviously A Rod, um, Nomar injuries caught up to him. <laughs> you guys know him, uh, <laughs> but no, you're right. This current crop of oh. young dudes, and we just did that, right? Like, kind of like just throwing it's, names. It's out. If we actually think oh about my, it. I'm, like, I'm we're sure not, there's so many even. guys we're missing, Absolutely. and 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 it's not that it's devaluing Jeter, but we've almost. You know, middle infield and like catchers almost were looked at the same way. Like, oh, if you could get someone that could hit at those positions, and exactly. now it's like, oh yeah, Glaber hit what forty one last year. Something exactly, stupid. it's it's crazy. And we used to think, right, like that position. You know, come on, power coming out. I mean, we did see it a bit of yeah. like the Sorianos of the world, and, yeah. and obviously Robinson Cano. So we're right. not going to say that there's no power hitting in the middle infield, but it isn't a, a characteristic now. It's like common yeah. yeah like if you don't hit 20 i'll be like who the hell are you yeah, right. like, yeah you're not hitting 20 home runs <laughs> yeah. then who are you i want to see some uh, jose altuve right like yeah. even though he's already a freaking hall of famer right? yeah we're talking about this guy who's 30 and and he's accomplished what he has we are just such an embarrassment of riches in the <laughs> infield it's just i can if i wish that i was like back at your age obviously i had the pleasure of of growing up in the the peak time of Roberto Alomar, right? So that's what I got yeah. to watch. And, and I got to watch Vizquel and Alomar, and that was my, my gold oh. standard. But I have to say, I mean, every, every once in a while, when Correa is healthy and, and he sends the ball over to Bregman, it's pretty to watch, right? <laughs> or when he sends it over to, to Yuli Gurriel. Yeah. It's impressive. I mean, even Correa, they, you think of Altuve because he won the MVP and yes. he's a special dude. It's like, oh, Carlos Correa, 10, 15 years ago, I mean, he'd, he'd be one of the first names out of everyone's lips, and we, we mention him in passing. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's, that speaks of how lucky this generation yeah. is and how lucky we are to have you guys, like, talk about them. We're trying to. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do here. We like the person. People don't care what old people think, like me. They care what you guys think. Uh, so we'll get, we'll, we'll grow. You're going to grow? Yeah, but, well, I get older yeah, every day. Growth spurt's coming soon. Yeah. yeah. It's about time. Yeah, about, it's been yeah. a while. Yeah, it's, it's been, uh, been halted since has, like, has your mom been confused? 15 years of no <laughs> height growth. Like, yeah. come on. Uh, get up there sooner or later. <laughs> Just I'm wait till past 40. I'm 44. When when you start, this, it goes <laughs> the, the other way. way. Yeah. I really, oh I used to be, God. I'm not kidding. I used to be like 5'9 and a half. I barely make 5'9 now. Yeah. It's really kind of depressing. I spend, I spend a lot of time slunch at a computer, so I think I've lost some as well. I, I, that's my excuse. Have you seen out there? There's a whole world. No, <laughs> no. 
it's really pretty. I, I try to bait him out right there. He's strong. The He's yeah, strong. No, 15 hours. You got to make videos. He's tough <laughs> all day. You got to pay you. I had like, candy. I had a, I don't know if it's a hot take or, or thought process take, with the no? uh, Acuna stuff. And Please. do I say that right? Because everyone always tells you me. You did very well. I did? Mm-hmm. Ha! Acuna. Okay. That internet. When when he's <laughs> when he got in trouble for you know not Take running. That internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take them all. Just out. in general. Bring in. Yeah. <laughs> when he's not when he got in trouble for not running out, you know, out of the box on the home run, I had a thought process, and Let's if, think. if Let's it's if it. it's terribly wrong or rude or whatever, I, I want to know. I don't think it's rude at all. But thinking he gets drafted at 16 years old, mm-hmm. right? And before that, his life is probably showcases and events. And kid that comes from a baseball family. Yeah. So yeah. But it's always events where he's putting his individual skill on play. Right. Uh Like in America, you'd probably play a U ball or a travel ball and you have this team and, uh, and it seems like they get, they get picked up so young that then they go to the minors. And again, in the minors, they don't care about winning the actual games that much. Like that they, I'm going to disagree with you. They pitch the pitchers like four innings and they just (laughs) take them out. You know what I mean? Like, Obviously, they want to win. There's some other moving But it's not parts, like winning you know? is the only thing that matters. That's not the minor leagues, and it's not... Well, it is supposed to be a farm system, right, yeah. for developing right. minor yes. leaguers. Yeah, I'm not saying it it's wrong. It is the ultimate goal. Yeah, right? I'm not saying it's wrong. And it should be. So for a young should guy be. like Acuna, is the, is the first time... Acuna, you Acuna. see, Acuna. you screwed it up there. Yeah. You had Acuna, Acuna before. Acuna. Acuna. Internet, he apologizes. Acuna. No? <laughs> Never. <laughs> it, is, it, is it weird or wrong to say, like, when he got to the Braves, and was that the first time, like, the team winning... Being the mm. number one goal, I think that you're entitled to your opinion. So no, no, so I'm I wrong. can't tell say me that. As a, I think I don't see it from that perspective, but okay. I can't tell you that you're wrong because you think you something. You can't. I, no, I just think like because like, it's like sixteen, so young. R- knowing Ronaldo Cunha like the way that I do, I've never spoken to him about this specific, you know, situation. I would be very surprised if it was that way. This is a kid that was instituted whose father played baseball, whose uncle, who is cousins with Alcides. He really gets it and who was on a young Venezuelan all-star yeah. team okay. and who played for his country. My thing and I more, actually yeah. feel there's a pride of country and a pride of team oh. very ingrained in him. I think the only reason why he did that is because he is immature and it was a stupid move. That's yeah. it. I no meant, other reason. I meant more like He's the backlash. Like he might not have had as much backlash oh. from his teammates and manager growing up. I think that was just a youth thing. Okay. I, I, uh, All right. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. I think Happy. it's just youth. This is a kid. Youth. Okay. And it, it doesn't excuse it. You should still not do it, but it is a product in my eyes of stupidity. And I feel that if you Ronald do it, would kind of agree with me. I think you can do it as long as the ball 1000% is going over the wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think if, you if can there's do any it, doubt. I am a little bit of a, I'm not as much of a stickler as other people are. Yeah. So I may be a little wishy washy in this, they may call me, but I think you can do it if you are Robinson Cano and you're nursing a quad. I'm sorry. I think you can. Yeah. I think well, you put in the time, you are 38 years old and. The quad is barking. I'm sorry, I'm not going to run the and liner out. We're, yeah. we're getting yeah, shoot we're, me. We're getting there as baseball. I mean, there's, there's still, out. Yeah. there there will still be some curmudgeons out there that you run every ball out. If there's a little bottle, you could get it. But 162 games, everything we do with health and everything right now, like yes. you're saying, is you know if you hit a chopper to second, maybe you shouldn't be bombing it to first when there's a 99.9% chance you're going to get out because you might miss two weeks with a pulled hamstring exactly. instead of being there the next at bat. But the funny thing about this, and I don't know, obviously don't know enough about the three of you to know whether you guys have been really elite athletes at one point. Oh. I you, have you, not. You, you, you can know tell by I have not, at. obviously. You can tell that we athlete. have not. Do you I don't know that. Do you, you want to see a sprint? Been, you could have been a freak. Oh, this needs to happen. You want to see a sprint? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the point... Race Meredith. <laughs> Where's Meredith that we're going to raise her now? Yeah, she's walking away. <laughs> but my point being Meredith that... was a really good athlete, right? There's yeah, volley- Meredith, volleyball. Meredith, a ridiculous yeah. athlete at LaSalle. No, yeah. you, you got to do this. She, she she's also a really great basketball, like a pick of basketball. Okay. okay. She's really good. Yeah, she like schools the rest of us. So, yeah. Okay. But the one thing about elite athletes that I have learned in covering elite athletes is that elite athletes will elite yeah. Yeah. It is so hard to dumb them down to the rest of us and the way that we live <laughs> our lives. It is impossible. I was, where was I in a, I can't remember if it was spring training or regular season, right? But it was a game that couldn't matter less. And Aaron Hicks, who had already, it was just before, right? Like his injury was there early, like running some sprints. It was like a hundred degrees. And yeah. I was like, what the heck are you doing, yeah. dude? Yeah. 
And this is just what they do. And I feel that most athletes, which is why I blame stupidity. I do feel, you know, for what Ronald <laughs> yeah. did, I do feel that most athletes cannot be at the top of their game all the time. And then running out that ball becomes second nature and they do it all the time because it's just what they do. Right. Yeah, they just are who they are. Yeah, so I don't. No. Yeah. So like, I actually counterpointed my own argument <laughs> yeah. and made and myself look like a fool. Just go. <laughs> as usual. Welcome and to If you follow me, Marley Rivera, ESPN, you'll see how much of a fool I you am. You might be our first uh, guest that's going on both of our podcasts. I just thought about that, Jake. Wow. We're talking Yanks and talking baseball, and I think this applies to both. Well, thank you. You're multi-talented. Wow. Do I get extra Swedish fish? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Jake would like you to take all yes. of those away I from me. I love Swedish fish. Uh, I haven't had these in, like, college. That's a long time ago. I uh, I went to an event. Not well. We'll we can wander away from baseball. I went I to another. You know, I have to go talk to Brody. I, to, so I have another five minutes. I, five I, minutes. Okay. I went to an event in Denver. It was like this. It was this eating thing. Whatever. It's like, oh, try this. Try this. I think it was Thrillist like or something. A yeah, really nice night. Good. Really nice night. You related to the ballpark or no? On the way out, no, no okay. baseball here. Okay. <laughs> on on the way out, this is just me and Swedish fish because you need to understand. On the way out, there was this like, it was it was a make your own ice cream on the way out bar. It was really nice. Put and there were some toppings. There was Swedish fish there, and I was like, yeah, I could put a couple Swedish fish on the on the ice cream. So I did, and then I had it. No joke, like my brain shuts off. I had a bag full of Swedish fish, and you don't remember and what I happened was just in between. I was just downing them. I got so sick. It's I like got a, so like sick. It's like a dog. Yeah. So it's it scary. is literally you can't just eat and it's, one. It's honestly, yeah. So like I we, have to say I'm kind of like that with potato chips. Yeah. I really am. What kind you of have potato to take chips? Them away. Just plain old. I'm so boring. Really? Plain old like Lay's. Original like Lay's. Oh yeah. Good I'm for old, you. dude. They didn't have like all these <laughs> flavors you cool young people have. That's how we're known. Cool flavors. <laughs> I'm in the That's city. That's what people see yeah. me and think. Cool ah, flavor. What a cool flavor. <laughs> I'm in the city now. Uh Harlem. Right across from the stadium. Look at you. Was there some Latin food Careful I need to go with get? That hat. <laughs> what? You know what? The Julie from La Vida Baseball gave me this hat, and I said, "I don't think I can wear this, uh, you know, around Harlem and the Bronx." Like I think I can. I think it looks nice on you. Thank you. Pull it off. It hides my grays. <laughs> Is there any uh, Latin food I should go check out? Dominican There's a place food? called La Caridad. Very popular. You're going to have to yeah. spell it for me. You went too quick with the, 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 the La is just the article. I got that part. That. I got La. And it's Caridad. C-A-R-I-D-A-D. Caridad. Okay. Caridad. The charity is what it means. Here's another the one. Charity? The charity? The oh, charity. It's cool. just whatever. It's not for Translating charity. on the job again. But anyway, then there's another one like way up in Washington Heights. Okay. Called yeah. La Nueva Caridad. The new Caridad. <laughs> I, I figured that, that one, one yeah. is the one that has all the names um, of the dishes. Uh, due to Most of them are Yankees. Okay. A lot of Dominican baseball players and everything like that, but a lot of Yankees uh, right, have I'm their there. Dominican you. dishes in there. I'm going to text my girlfriend right now. And we'll, we'll go. Good. Is there a real the... girlfriend or is this? No. Okay. Have you seen her? I haven't seen her. Doesn't exist. She's going to be mad that I'm coming back with another hat. Every time I go on one of these trips, I come back with more hats than I left with. I have to. I have this great hat that you would be so jealous of from um, the, um, when we were in London. Yeah. The British like national team, like the baseball one, gave me that. Nice. <sighs> That's a cool hat. That's a very cool hat. Well, we know we have to go, but thank you very much for sitting Any down questions with us. for us before yeah. you leave? Yes. Oh, we have to do trivia too, real quick. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah, it's one. It's okay. It's Brody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> yes. I have to go listen to Brody and Brody. That'll be entertaining. so perfect. It'll be so great. And he'll be talking about the latest signing of Michael Waka. But oh, yes. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. Actually, it's not official. Oh, no, I think. Do you have a like a favorite baseball team? No, you really can't after you do this job for a yeah. while. I, When I was growing up, and everyone knows this, so I don't feel bad about doing When I was growing up, I rooted against the Yankees because everyone in my family was a Yankee fan. So I sort of was a Yankee hater. Okay. okay. So I did kind of support it's the Red Sox. It's not going on talking Yanks yeah. anymore. I know. And <laughs> sorry. But everyone knows this because I say it all the time. Bill, so cut the like, mic. <laughs> so I have to, um, to admit that I was a Yankee hater. Okay. But now I'm very neutral. I root for myself and easy travel. And the guys you like. To do that? Eh, sometimes. Yeah. Vladdy. Sometimes I just want the game to go quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for Vladdy to strike it on three pitches we'll if it's the ninth. Quick <laughs> trivia question. Roosevelt's are the guys who sent us out here. You can win a shirt if you get this right. Okay. You have one? I have one. 2019 New York Yankees. You're familiar with them, I believe. I'm not sure. Who hit the most home runs from the catcher position? Five, <laughs> four, four, three, two, two one. Austin Romine. Oh, oh, my God. God. No shirt for Marley. Wow. Was it the Kraken? It was you. I think you were second most. Actually, did Higgy get Romine? You still get a shirt. <laughs> you still get a shirt. 
obviously, yeah, obviously the kraken. Yes. But the most, the best part is that now you have not only the kraken but the white whale. So you get oh, wow. two mythical figures wow. because Brian Cashman calls Garrett Cole his white, white whale. whale, and the kraken came from Winter Meetings as well. It was another Brian you, Cashman nickname. Another, from he knows what he's doing. An existent creature we got from a, literature. We got a Roosevelt shirt for you. We'll let you pick it out. I liked it. Thank you very much for sitting down with Thank us. Thank you, Marley. Bye, kids. Bye.